Hi, everyone. Welcome to Screen Watching Meet the Filmmakers. Uh, today, we're talking about Boudicca, Queen of War. It's an epic vision of a heroine few know by name for director Jesse V. Johnson, telling the story of the Celtic warrior queen who rules the Iceni people and leads them into battle against the Roman invaders has been a decades-long ambition, which he has brought to life with a fierce Olga Kurilenko in the lead. Thank you so much for chatting with us on Screen Watching. Jesse, welcome. Thank you, Simon. Really, really happy to be here. Thank you. Mate, I want to, before we deep dive into, into Boudicca, I do want to ask about your years as a stuntman, um, working alongside some of the, the great directors, Spielberg and Verhoeven and Tim Burton. What sort of training ground were those years for a young man with, with dreams to direct? Uh, I think it was possibly one of the greatest training grounds. It was wonderful. It was really, really phenomenal as a, as a performer less so because you're really just trying to look after yourself and make sure you don't get hurt but then as you start to become more cerebral as you age and mature and you become a coordinator and a second unit director you start to realize what you're doing is you're you're bringing the creativity to a sequence giving them ideas for how to execute the action in a way that will serve the film and the story and the characters as honestly and as as well as possible but then beyond that you're talking to the actor and you're you're winning their trust and you're explaining why they need to do it this way and how it will work better uh all of that sort of you can't afford to be starstruck uh you have to be pragmatic and straightforward with them not so straightforward that you turn them off and upset them but in a way that allows you to talk to them like a normal person which is very very good practice because there's no, you know there's nothing as intimidating as the first time you actually have to talk to an actor and explain why they have to do something a particular way uh it's you know it's it's you know it's a very nerve-wracking thing uh you know you realize that you could upset that guy and if he walks off set you've just caused the production sixty thousand dollars a day delay or whatever you know that's sure. but that's, that's obviously there are other other you know uh various shades of how much trouble you can get yourself into by saying the wrong thing so it was a very good learning ground for for having those kind of conversations and and realizing that you were a part of that process and realizing that the actor has his process he or hers they've learned the lines which have taken them two three hours four hours the night before they have uh, a reason they're going to say in a particular way and why they're going to move through the set a particular way because they've it works for that character so whatever you're adding to that as the stunt person they've now got to pick up this weapon and hit the guy this way you have to understand that they've also got their their process so you blend sure. the two and it's learning to make that blend that's a mix of creative and business-like and safety and you know practical uh that that really gives you a handle on what it, it takes to become a director and then you're also talking with the producers and saying well i'm going to need an extra 10 grand for this and they're like are you mad are you crazy you know, no, i'm not crazy but that's what it's going to take and yeah. you have these conversations you've had those for 10 years 15 years you start directing and, and those are no longer intimidating conversations to have you you look at the producer and you say look if you put the opening sequence the way you want it in the trailer this is what it's going to cost you wow. and they go oh, you know and they trust you you know because you've you've done that plenty of times and when you say it's going to cost that much and take this long you have that experience so coming from stunts is phenomenal it's very good i was an assistant director for a few years in yeah. shawshank redemption and mr Arnold's opus Sure. Mortal Kombat and others uh, and it was good but it I, it wasn't creative in the same way that being a stunt you know an action coordinator is it, it, and you didn't have the same interaction with the actors I truly think that coming from stunts is one of the best places to come from why a long answer there. no great that was a great answer uh, on the topic of the stunt actor category at the Oscars why is the Academy balking on its inclusion is it something the stunt community wants uh the stunt community wants it desperately. I, I think your your biggest challenge is going to get it past the director's community because the moment you start to give too much credit to someone else, the director is going to go, just a minute, you know, the second unit director is getting the credit for the action in this movie. Oh, I designed okay. it. I told them how to do it. I looked at the previews. I told, you know, and, and where was the line between what the first unit was doing and what the second? So it becomes a very complex you know, battle of egos. And mm -hmm. I think you're better off saying, you know, there's this, this award goes to the film with the best action in it. And this, the first unit director gets it and the action team, you know, all of them from second unit director, the stunt coordinator, they all sure. get to share the Oscar. That way you'll, you'll get headway. If you simply create a category saying best stunt coordination, 
or best action for the second unit director, you're going to create an antagonistic uh, and you're going to, you're going to have a hard time getting traction. You know, DGA is very, very powerful and, and, yeah, and rightly sure. so. You know, there's a famous story when they were screening the, uh, the stage in Stagecoach uh, and, and it was directed by Yakima Canute. The film was directed by John Ford and they had John Ford, Marion C. Three people watching this sequence. Uh, and when it was done, the sequence was over. The producer turned to Yakima and said, you've made this movie. This is the greatest sequence I've ever seen. And Yakima went, oh, why did he have to say that? And he looked over at John Ford, who was just staring at the screen. And and sure enough, he never worked with John Ford again. Oh, John Ford no. made sure never to call him ever again. Of You can never underestimate the ego of, of certain people within the industry. <laughs> oh, my so, goodness. You know, Putting yourself in the production. If the producer had turned to the director and said, This is the most incredible sequence, you know, you got Yak to do some great stuff in this, yeah. they'd have worked together for the rest of their careers. But instead, he turned to Yakima and, and, and complimented him. Wow. Uh, it's, you know, it's a mercurial, strange, ego run business. And so I think you'll have a, you'll have a hard time unless you as, create a you know, category that thanks the first unit director. For That's sure. my opinion. Yeah. I may be wrong, wrong about a lot of things. Let's talk about Boudicca. Where does your passion for the story of Boudicca come from? You've spoken of it before of being a 20-year-old a passion project. What are the qualities that you find most compelling in her story? Uh, there's a lot of stories I've carried for that amount of time, you know, uh, that I've made into films. I think they all come from somewhere deep in your soul when you're a writer. And I think there's a few stories that you get inspired by and you write the script, you know, a month later or whatever. But most of them have come from something gestating for some time. Mm. Uh, I had gone... I, you know, to see the statue, the Thornycroft statue that we use in the movie, if you made it through to the end, yeah, it's absolutely. next to the Houses of Parliament uh, uh, and Big Ben in London. It gives you an idea how much value they associate with the story. Uh, it's her and her daughters in a chariot. And my mother, who was a single mother and also had wild red hair, was very articulate. And she was a teacher and knew about the story and, and told me about it. And it was, And she found it very personal because it was a, a single woman doing this battle against the Roman Empire. She found that interesting. Uh, and I, I consequently dug a little more at that story as, as the years went by. And I found it to be extraordinarily compelling, you know, mm. uh, and, and, and fascinating and, and, and heartbreaking, all of the things that create great drama. And I, and I felt there was a story there. Uh, my daughter's middle name, who's 17, her middle name is Boudicca. gives you an idea how long I've held this one close to my chest, you know, wow. uh, but it, you know the story was very difficult. It's it's a problematic story. What happens to them? And it's recorded by first hand accounts. You have Tacitus and 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 uh, 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 Claudius Deo. You know you, you have two very you know you have two almost first hand uh, 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 you know uh, accounts of what actually happened, which is very very rare and and. It's awful. It's beyond explicit. It's beyond what you could put into a film. And it's trying to work out a way of putting that on the screen that took so long, unfortunately. Uh, if I were a better writer, it would probably have taken less time. But uh, I, you can't show certain things to an audience. And what, what the Romans did to these two little girls was beyond show in movies. And so there was a way. What I wanted to do was show it without showing it. Let the audience understand what had happened. The, the the violence of that without actually showing it to them so it takes a little time to sink in you know and after, you know i think it's about 15 minutes after it's happened in the film you realize what has actually happened the audience cottons onto it depending on what they know about history a little sooner or a little later yep. but then they they realize and it's like oh god and, and for me that was even more profound than than showing them what happened which is you know it's just violence you know it's awful yeah i i, I laugh a little when you hear about Oscar nomination snubs and performances like Olga's were, were never even in the discussion because the transformation that she undertakes and the emergence of this warrior queen is the best she's ever been. Tell me about working alongside her and, and crafting this character. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think so too. I think she's she's utterly wonderful in, in the picture. Uh, you know, to picture, I I flew to Paris from LA and I had I had I painted the picture of her as the housewife with the beautiful hair and the the makeup and the wonderful silks and then painted a picture with the eyebrows shaved off and the bad teeth and the broken nose 
and the, the wild hair. And I painted those two as watercolors. And I flew out and I said, look, this is the transformation you go over. This is what I want. This is what I want from you. And that was what excited her about the project. And that was what got it traction, you know. Uh, and so I knew she could do that. I'd worked with her on White Elephant, a film I directed. Uh, and, and I'd met her and I knew she was capable of so much more than people were asking her to do. You know, she's always being asked to run around with an AR-15 and yell, get down, let's get out of here. Yeah. You know, and, and I worked with her and I saw a, a real worker, a, an actual actor, a, you know, a journeyman who knew the craft inside and out and, and could put energy into the physicality and also had the instincts to be great. And I, I believe in her 100%. And so mm -hmm. for me, it was pressing it's like okay let's do this let's get her on board with and and she saw it her her, her biggest question was you know did she want to play an english you know, such an english character when it's you know she's ukrainian I said look you know the celts and the, and and the gales came from eastern europe they were not english at all they didn't speak english for another thousand years the yeah. the language they spoke would have been you know different in every little village and, and fife them uh, she was the first person to bring them together to form anything that even remotely resembled uh, a British fighting force or, or a nation. You know, there'd never been anything before. You, you, you dealt with it by by village, by 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 uh, warlords, and, and you know, by tribe. You, you know, so you know, she was as close to what the real representation would have been as as is imaginable. I also wanted to steer very very far away from a traditional English Shakespearean kind of over the top. Uh, performance, which is not what I wanted at all. I, that's, you know, I, I spent my life around warriors and soldiers and professional hard mm -hmm. men, and none of them speak like that. They, they have a, they're a very grounded way of talking, and I wanted, I wanted, wanted that to be more prevalent in the script. And I think it upset people like the English Guardian newspaper who came after me, you know, pitchforks. <laughs> but it's like, no, that's, you know, this is, this is, this is what England should be. It's, you know, uh, it, you know, there was, in Shakespearean times, they didn't talk how they do in a Shakespearean play. That's yeah. that's the truth of the matter. You know, it was, it was a lot more. I want basic. to ask, well, uh, probably off, a, a little bit off track, but your heroines, the women protagonists in your film, not only Olga, but also Lucy Martin in this film, who's amazing. And and uh, I didn't even realise it was your film at the time, but I saw Hell Hath No Fury and with Nina Bergman in there. What new challenges and, and opportunities, I guess, does gender swapping that traditional action film lead role afford you in your films uh it i prefer i love working with strong female actors it's it it it's different i've worked with a lot of very very tough males you know uh you know world champion ufc fighters martial artists who are the best in their game physical you know stunt performers who are very very good method actors uh, there's a certain testosterone competition that goes on with a guy, you know, there's always, you know, there's, there's a one upping, there's a, who can get there first, who, even if it's not an actual, you know, uh, uh, actual competition, it's there the whole time. And it's, yep. it's an interesting thing. I don't mind it. Use it to your advantage. You know, I'm a very smart, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a manipulative fellow. I'm not that smart, but I'm, I know how to make that sort of thing work to my advantage. And we, you know, for example, on Triple Threat, which was a film I did with, you know, we had scenes with eight martial artists throughout most of the schedule. And all of these guys were the top of their game. And any other scenario, this would have been just chaos. But we had Mike Bisping there, who at the time was the world champion UFC guy. And he said, he said, everyone behaves on this one. You know, all of you are bullshitters. I'm the only one here that's a real fighter. This is how it goes down. And it was wonderful. And and he was he, he actually kept kept the set calm. And it became one of the most joyous experiences of my career. I, I've seen that. I know how to work that. With a, with a woman in the lead role, you have a slightly different dynamic. And that dynamic, for me, leads to really creative opportunities. You're, you're putting all of this energy into the, into the part, into the performance, that in the past I've spent you know, a lot of energy in the, in the, you know, the sort of jousting that goes on, you know, where you're, you know, my biceps this big and I've done this over there and I can tell you why to do this because in a real fight, it would be like that. And it's great, but, but, but it, it, it presents a very different Rubik's cube for me and one that I really enjoy working in, you know, in a, uh, Nina Bergman was the first time I'd, I'd really uh, worked with a, a female lead and, and it was a joyous experience. I, I loved it. I, I loved that collaboration. It was, mm. it was, uh, a lot of you know a lot of fun and extraordinarily rewarding creatively and I, I found working with Olga on White Elephant a similar scenario she had come to set 
after 22 hours in a plane on, on planes, which she'd flown from somewhere that had taken a bunch of stops, she was exhausted physically and mentally. I could tell, you know, from 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 her disposition, not from the way she looks, because she also looks wonderful. But she came to me and said, uh, I'm exhausted. What have we got today? And I showed her the day schedule. It was 12 hours and it was solid. It was stunts and action and dialogue. And she looked at me and she nodded and said, uh, get me the strongest caffeine drink you can find, uh, coffee, espresso, whatever you've got, any, any, any sports drinks. In actual fact, get me two of those. Bring those here with an assistant. Bring me the stunt coordinator right now. I want to talk through exactly what I'm doing in terms of choreography and let's get oh that sorted gosh. out. And I'll be ready to go in uh, about 20 minutes. Is that good for you? I'm like, absolutely. Let's what do a it. work and ethic. 12 hour day. It was fantastic. At the end of the day, I said, it was incredible. I have no idea how you did it. I bet you're going to sleep well tonight. She said, yep, and I'll see you tomorrow. And it was like, <laughs> this, this kind of uh, attitude is very, very rare. And Olga had that. And, I'd, and I really enjoyed it. And I, I knew I was going to work with her again. I felt it. And I've, I've since worked with her twice. And, and she always brings the same, you know, game to it, you know, mm. and, and professionalism and dedication. And I love that. And, yeah. and these kind of performers are very rare. When they're in a big name actor, it's extraordinarily rare. And when it's it's someone that you also enjoy chatting with and talking to, and, and you know, it's fantastic. So uh, for me, it was a blessed ex experience working with both Nina and and Olga, and also Lucy Martin, who's who comes from that same school. Who, who, by the way, I think is has every everything going for her to be the next Angelina Jolie. Oh, she, absolutely, you know, she, she was great. Or the first Lucy Martin, you know, if she pulls it together and really, you know, is able to find the right scripts and, and jobs. It's such a such a difficult business, of course, we're in. Mm. But uh, I, I'm a huge fan of her, and uh, you know, in many ways, I would have liked to have made her role bigger. But but I had my hands full with the story of Boudicca as it was, you know. Uh, Carter Munda was was a special character though because she was also a warrior who was fighting Romans in in history, but no one wrote about her because mm. she didn't have uh, uh, Cassius Deo or or Tacitus to write these accounts. So all we know about her is just just the whisper. It is sort of uh, you know shreds of of historical information. But she fought a campaign in the north against the Romans, which was fierce and bloodthirsty. And if some filmmaker wanted to dig dig that story up, it's I'm sure that's a brilliant one as well. You know, Thank but you. but I I felt we had to put her character in here, so I stuck her in as as this sort of uh, this warrior. Finally, Carter. and you've touched on this this earlier. Um from that nightmarish slaying of the Druids sequence that opens the film, um, it depicts the violence of the time, frankly, often graphically. Um, was there a decision made in pre-production that governed how violence was going to be portrayed, how far you had to go to make it, or make it realistic, how much you had to pull back to to make it watchable? Uh, I, I felt it would be doing a disservice to the story of Boudicca not to show the violence uh that these guys inflicted the romans they were they were barbaric uh they were awful so on that hand i i, I needed to show what 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 was capable of that on the other hand people don't really understand sword fighting you know you fight a person with a sword you're not going to get a kill you know you're going to have to hit them six seven times before they die especially if they're wearing armor it's awful. And you're going to end up with your knuckles and you're going to, you know, they say there's no winner in any knife fight, mm. you know, both it's only, only who bleeds out slowest that wins, you know, it's a, it's the most brutal form of combat there is, you know, all, all combat hand to hand is, is awful, but you imagine the PTSD and the trauma associated with winning a sword fight, you mm. know, let alone losing it, you know, that's, you know, if you're not killed, you know, that's, that would be terrible. The blood sepsis that would set in. And, I, you know, I, I wanted to show a little bit of this. I don't feel I showed it as well as I should, but as, as I, you know, if I had a little more time, but, but I, but I didn't want it to be the old Hollywood, Oh, sword under the arm. Ah, oh, I'm yes. and I go down. because that would have done disservice to it. I felt, and I, 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 I wanted to really, try and put that across as viscerally as possible. There's no there's no choreography, balletic dance to it. It's messy. It's awful. Mm. If you see a real fight with knives, it's the most hideous thing in the world. Yeah. Your heart's beating by the end of it because it's just, there is, you know, anything can go wrong at any moment, you know. One person trips and the other person, you know, the, the, the underdog suddenly has, you know, becomes the winner. And, and I wanted to show a little bit of that in there if possible. It, I, you know, I did to a degree... I felt it still looked a little bit choreographed in some areas, but you know, I did my damnedest with this one. I think I came as close as I, I have so far to 
what it might be like to fight with her. Oh, with her. It, was, it was very yeah. immersive and, and and very powerful to watch. Uh, Boudicca, Queen of War, is out February 21 on physical and digital media through Defiant Screen Entertainment here in Australia. Other territories, please check for local distribution. Jesse B. Johnson, thank you so much for, for chatting with us. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much for the insight you've given. It's been a great chat. All the best, mate. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hope people enjoy it.